Welcome to this video for Revision World covering the strange case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. In this video I'll be covering the characters, the key themes, quotes from the novella and the structure and setting. Okay, so let's familiarise ourselves with the characters, starting with the two main protagonists, Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Dr Jekyll is a respected doctor and friend of both Lanyon, a fellow physician, and Utterson, a lawyer. Jekyll is well known in the community and known for his decency and charitable works. He is a seemingly prosperous man. Since his youth, however, he has secretly engaged in unspecified, dissolute and corrupt behaviour. Troubled by his dark side, Jekyll undertakes experiments intending to separate his good and evil sides from one another. Through these experiments, he creates Mr Hyde, finding a way to transform himself in such a way that he fully becomes his darker side. Mr Hyde is a strange, violent and cruel man who looks faintly pre-human. Hyde is described by other characters as ugly and deformed, yet no one could say exactly why. He is not a creature who belongs in the rational world a world of conscious articulation or logical grammar. Hyde is Jekyll's dark side, released from the bonds of conscience and let into the world by mysterious potion. Mr Gabriel John Utterson is a prominent and outstanding lawyer. Well respected in the London community, Utterson is reserved, dignified and perhaps even lacking somewhat in imagination. But he does seem to possess a furtive curiosity about the more sordid side of life. His rationalism, however, makes him ill-equipped to deal with the supernatural nature of the Jekyll-Hyde connection. While not a man of science, Utterson represents middle-class Victorian society in his devotion to reasonable explanations and denial of the supernatural. Dr Hasty Lanyon Dr Lanyon is a reputable London doctor, and along with Utterson, formerly one of Jekyll's closest friends. Lanyon is the embodiment of rationalism, materialism and scepticism, who serves as a foil for Jekyll. A foil is a character whose attitudes or emotions contrast with, and therefore illuminate, those of another character. Lanyon's death represents the more general victory of supernatural over materialism in the novel. Mr Poole is Dr Jekyll's butler and is his loyal servant, having worked for the Doctor for over 20 years, and his concern for his master eventually drives him to seek Utterson's help when he becomes convinced that something has happened to Jekyll. Mr Enfield is a distant cousin and lifelong friend of Mr Utterson. Like Utterson, Enfield is reserved, formal and scornful of gossip. Indeed, the two men often walk together for long stretches of time without saying a word to one another. Mr Guest is Utterson's clerk and confidant. Guest is also an expert in handwriting. His skill proves particularly useful when Utterson wants him to examine a bit of handwriting from Mr Hyde. Guest notices that Hyde's script is the same as Jekyll's, but slanted in the other direction. Sir Danvers Carrow MP is a wealthy and well-liked nobleman, a member of Parliament and a client of Utterson's. The maid, whose employer Hyde once visited, is the only person who claims to have witnessed the murder of Sir Danvers Carew. She states that she saw Hyde murder Carew with Jekyll's cane. Having fainted after seeing what happened, she then wakes up and rushes to the police. I'm now going to talk about the key themes of the novel. The duality of man. Jekyll asserts that man is not truly one but two. Stevenson uses the characters of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde to express his beliefs about human duality by introducing them as two contrasting characters, using two completely different characters with different names and appearances, gets this message of human duality across effectively to the reader. Good versus evil. Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde is an allegory about the good and evil that exist in all people and about our struggle with these two sides of our own personalities. In the novel, the battle between good and evil rages within the individual. 
Since Hyde seems to be taking over, one could argue that evil is stronger than good. However, Hyde does end up dead, perhaps suggesting a weakness or failure of evil. The big question, of course, is whether or not good can be separated from evil or whether the two are forever intertwined. Repression is indisputably a cause of trouble in Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. The repression here is that of Victoria Britain. No sexual appetites, no violence and no great expressions of emotion, at least in the public sphere. Everything is sober and dignified. The more Jekyll's forbidden appetites are repressed, the more he desires the life of Hyde, and the stronger Hyde grows. We see this after Dr Jekyll's two-month hiatus from being Hyde. Dr Jekyll finds the pull to evil has been magnified after months of repression. Friendship and loyalty in the novel serves to drive the plot forward. Aside from human curiosity, Utterson is compelled to uncover the mystery of the evil man because of his friendship with Dr Jekyll. In trying to unravel the secret, he uncovers crucial piece of information. In this sense, friendship acts as both a motivator and an enabler. As for the friendship between Dr Lanyon and Dr Jekyll, it's certainly not as unconditional as the loyalty Mr Utterson bears with Dr Jekyll. Instead, it's fraught with competition, anger and eventually an unreconcilable quarrel. And thus we see the friendship can be ruined by differences of opinion. Appearances and reputation figure in the novel both figuratively and literally. Dr Jekyll definitely wants to keep up the well-respected facade, even though he has a lot of unsavoury tendencies. In a literal sense, the appearance of buildings in the novel reflect the character of the building's inhabitants. Dr Jekyll has a comfortable and well-appointed house. Mr Hyde, however, spends most of his time in a dingy, windowless structure of the Doctor's laboratory. In the novel, curiosity drives the characters to seek knowledge. This curiosity is either suppressed or fulfilled in each character. Curiosity lacks any negative connotation. Instead, characters who do not actively seek to unravel the Jacqueline Hyde mystery may be viewed as passive or weak. Finally, the characters' curiosities are to some degree transferred over to the reader as we seek to solve the puzzle along with Mr Utterson. The plot is frequently driven forward by secrecy and deception. Utterson doesn't know the relationship between Jekyll and Hyde and wants to find out. Also, by admitting the scenes of Mr Hyde's supposedly crazy debauchery, Stevenson allows our imaginations to run wild and fill in the gaps. The novel details two crimes of violence against innocent and helpless citizens. First, a little girl, and second, an elderly man. The violence of the novel centres on Mr Hyde and raises the question as to whether or not violence is an inherent part of man's nature. God and Satan figure prominently in the text, as well as many general references to religion and works of charity. As part of their intellectual lives, the men in the novel discuss various religious works. One sign of Mr Hyde's wickedness, for example, is his defacing of Dr Jekyll's favourite religious works. Mr Hyde is also frequently likened to Satan. Most female characters in Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde are passive and weak. The first female we see is a young girl mowed over by Mr Hyde. Although she is not much worse, more frightened, she still kicks up an incredible fuss and a large group of people come to her aid. The next one we see is via a maid's narrative of the Karoo murder. After witnessing the murder, she faints, awakening long after the murderer is gone, making her a passive spectator. Science, reason and the supernatural are the main factors in the development of the conflict between Dr Lanyon and Dr Jekyll, which is integral to the plot. Lanyon adheres to a more traditional set of scientific notions than Jekyll. In the book, science becomes a cover for supernatural activities. Jekyll's brand of science veers towards the supernatural. OK, so let's move on to the structure and setting of the novel. The structure. Robert Louis Stevenson lets us, as readers, become detectives through the character of Mr Utterson. We are prompted to ask three key questions throughout the novella. Who is Hyde? Why does Hyde have a grip on Jekyll? 
And why did Lanyon and Jekyll argue? The text focuses on the repercussions of events and characters use dialogue to deduce what is happening. This adds to our sense of mystery as readers. Most of the narration comes to us as readers through the conversations had by the characters, rather than witnessing the events firsthand. Letters are also used by Stevenson to allow us to piece together the events of the novella. Stephen uses this epistolary style to re-establish and explain what has happened, with Dr Lanyon's letter and Dr Jekyll's statement. As readers, we read these letters alongside Utterson and we don't get his reaction to the revelations, so we're left with our own impressions of the events. The title of the novella starts with The Strange Case and the first chapter is called The Story of the Door. This shows us from the very beginning Stevenson is inviting his readers to a mystery of the story. Carew's murder is told from the point of view of the maid, who we are told is romantically given. This allows us to question her account of events. Setting. Stevenson uses the setting of London to expose different parts of the city, which represent different things. Order versus chaos. Jekyll's respectable London versus Hyde's repugnant London. Descriptions of buildings and the weather are also used to heighten tensions and to add to the suspense. Many of the novel's key events involving Mr Hyde happen in the dark, which adds to the sense of mystery and intrigue. Other settings, old buildings, Jekyll's laboratory for example, are all used to build up tension and suspense throughout the novella. I'm going to focus now on the quotes regarding the two main characters, Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. I've included a link to where you can find more quotes from the novel on Revision World in the description of this video. Quotes, Dr Jekyll. He began to go wrong, wrong in the mind. The large, handsome face of Dr Jekyll grew pale to his lips and there came a blackness about his eyes. You must suffer me to go my own dark way like some disconsolate prisoner, weeping like a woman or lost soul, pale and shaken and half-fainting, the groping before him with his hands, like a man restored to, for death, there stood Henry Jekyll. Quotes Mr Hyde. Black, sneering coolness like Satan. The other snarled in a savage laugh, stamping his foot, broke out of all bounds and clubbed him to the earth. Ape-like fury, a murderer's autograph, like some damned juggernaut, mere animal terror, pale and dwarfish, haunting sense of deformity, like a rat, some creature. OK, I've added a link to Revision World's notes on Jekyll and Hyde in the description of this video, so check that out. Remember to subscribe to this channel and give us a big thumbs up if you like what you've heard 